What's up, world? It's your girl, T. Fizzle. Okay, so um, a few people have asked me to start doing weekly commentary on you know different reality shows because if you don't know I do a lot of commentary online on Twitter and on Facebook and we go in we have a good time I'm probably one of the few bloggers um you know when I talk about these reality TV show stars it's not from no jocking point of view you know what I'm saying we talk shit we go in we have a good time we have fun so um a few people asked me to start doing video vlogs on the shows and being that basketball wise season four just premiered yesterday I figured we'll start with that since the Real Housewives of Atlanta is starting you know is about to come to an end and um, everything else so if you did not tune in last night to Basketball Wives it was it was kind of crazy it was okay in my opinion wasn't all that um, but I'm not shocked by the fuckery that is Basketball Wives um, it's the same old same old drama and everything first else. thing I noticed when I turned on to Basketball Wives is that I didn't see Greasy Mika and I was happy that Mika is not in this season. Um, I guess ever since Tammy laid hands on her, she's been cool on all the ladies and she decided to drop out. I wasn't sad by this at all. So to start off the season, we meet two new ladies. Um, they're Royce's dancer friends. One is named Kenya and the other is named Keisha. Um, right now, I don't really know how I feel about these two. It's kind of early. You know what I'm saying? We'll wait to see what type of foolishness and drama they bring to the picture as time goes on. It's still too early to tell. So Royce decides to confront Susie's crazy ass. And basically, she lets her know that she's not really feeling her right now. She didn't appreciate Susie throwing her under the bus last season. Susie, of course, played stupid and ditzy like she always does and claims that she didn't throw her under the bus. But then VH1 played a recap and showed Susie throwing Royce under the bus and talking about her clothing and everything else. Susie just irritates me. I don't understand why this lady's on the show. She serves no purpose whatsoever. There's nothing scripted around her. We don't know what she does for a living. She's no longer selling real estate. You don't see her with her children. Why is Susie there? We've all just come to the conclusion that she's just there to stir up drama. Nothing more, nothing less. Out of all the basketball jump offs, because none of them are wives, I will say that I do like Royce. Um, I like Royce because Royce don't really care. She don't try to go about kissing nobody's ass. Royce does Royce. So I do like Royce for that, and I like her attitude. So after the whole Royce and Susie confrontation, um, she meets up with Tammy, and she introduces Tammy to Kenya and Keisha. And before Tammy's big, tall ass could even take a sip of her iced tea, she asks Keisha if she's white. And Keisha's like, no, you know, I'm biracial, I'm black and white. Oh, okay. Then she asks her how she feels about Jen and Susie because Keisha and Kenya had met Jen and Susie the day before. And they basically said that they felt that they really didn't know too much about Susie. They kind of felt like she was kind of standoffish. But they felt that Jen was bougie. Um, and Tammy agreed. It's obvious that Tammy is still pissed off about the food stamp situation that happened two years ago because it's like, you know, she loves to throw that bougie word around. But I too think Jen is kind of bougie as well. But again, that's been her personality from day one. Why are people shocked by this? What I love most is that Tammy then proceeds to say, I'm not down with that he said, she said bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Whatever I got to say, I'm going to say to your face. I don't like that talking behind people's back. Then the next thing, she's meeting with Jen and Susie and basically telling them everything that Kenya and Keisha said about them. Tammy, what the hell? You just did the same exact thing that you said that you hated. You just started some whole he said, she said mess. One thing I noticed about Susie's crazy ass is that this season, I guess she's trying to make a name for herself. So Susie kind of thinks she's about it. Um, she went on to make a stupid comment about Keisha. She said that basically Keisha doesn't look like a Keisha, which, um, I guess she was assuming that Keisha was going to be, you know, dark skinned with natural hair and ghetto and not, you know, some biracial girl who looks more white. I think that's what she was implying. But, um, with that being said, she also made a comment that kind of pissed me off yesterday. I had to go in on her. She said that Keisha signed a country and that she sounded like a redneck. When she made that country redneck statement, that pissed me off. I was like, uh, excuse me, bitch. Bitch, did you just go there? First of all, Susie looks like she's damn near 40 and she talks with a lisp. Do we really want to talk about accents, Susie? Let's not go there, boo. So after Susie's bullshit rant, trying to sound and act tough, um, Tammy decides to get all the girls together except for Royce to meet up with Jen and Ev to find out what's going on, how come they're beefing. 
So basically, they're all there. This, this, the crack circle is back together again, and they're trying to find out what's going on. It's kind of funny. It seems like Jen kind of got some balls this season. She was kind of going off on Ev and getting loud and saying, what the F you want for me, Ev? What do you want, Ev? And Ev was like, I'm going to need you to calm the fuck down before I punch you in your face. Ev wasn't playing with Jen. And, you know, Jen, once Ev said that, Jen calmed the hell down and became the same little docile follower that she's been the past two, three seasons. But anyways, I really don't understand why Evelyn is mad at Jennifer. Um, you know, I just feel like she just likes to hold a grudge the same way she did with Susie the first season or the second season. She likes to just keep shit going. Um, Jennifer, you know, took the punk way out and claimed that her publicist is the one who wrote the blog. I don't believe that her publicist wrote it. I believe Jennifer wrote it. I think looking at the show where their beef lies is the fact that Evelyn encouraged Jen to leave her husband. Evelyn threw a lot of salt. Evelyn, you know, I felt like Evelyn should have stayed out of their marriage. If Jen wanted to leave, then that was on Jen. But I felt like Evelyn played a role in them, you know, breaking up. I mean, don't get me wrong, Eric did his thing too. But it's just the point, like, Ev should have stayed out of it. And so I think what kind of happened is that after Ev, you know, made it seem like, you know, come on, just be single again. Let's go do us. We can be single ladies. And then Ev turns around and gets a man. That's where the drama came in because now Ev is not single. Now you're sitting here running after Chad Ocho Cinco, you know what I'm saying? And I'm sitting here single and my husband is gone. So I think that's where a lot of their conflict comes from. She basically let Ev gas her head up and now she's kind of salty about that. I could be wrong. In person, I don't care. But again, it's just my opinion. That's my assessment of the situation. Jen starts crying with her weak-ass personality and she wants Ev to be her friend again. And Ev, true to her, you know, want to be hardcore Puerto Rican personality, you know, it's basically like, fuck you, Jen. I'm done. We're not friends. You know, I don't care. I don't care about you crying. She wants to have nothing to do with Jen. And basically, you know, they kind of end it there. What I love the most about that confrontation was Shawnee's, you know, fake ass look of concern. Like she really cared. She just kind of sat there and looked like, I can't believe they're fighting. Can't believe, you know, they're not friends. I can't believe that the circle's broken. Sean, you don't give a damn about that shit. You're just trying to get a paycheck, girl. We see you. In my opinion, both these women are silly as hell. If you can end a 14-year friendship behind some blog shit, you know what I'm saying, and you guys can't see past that, in my opinion, y'all probably were never friends to begin with. Let's keep, let's keep it real. Because I don't understand why it's that hard to forgive her and keep it moving. You know, I just think that the show has gotten to both of their heads and both their egos have blown up. Simple as that. Because now you can't tell Jen shit. She even got some new contacts this season. See, she's not wearing no purple ones. She's wearing some hazel. So, we'll see how long the hazel ones last. Honestly, I think the best part of the, of the night was the fact that Shut the Fuck Up Susie became a worldwide trending topic. I about died when I seen that. I had to send this tweet out. I think that it was almost like the cherry on top. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm not the only one who hates Susie, who can't stand her damn stupid reality TV show persona. Susie just sucks and she needs to be removed from the show. I know she had to be embarrassed as hell when Shut the Fuck Up Susie was the number one trending topic. If I lie down to Twitter and I say Shut the Fuck Up T, I log off and y'all wouldn't see or hear from me for two weeks. <laughs> I'd be so embarrassed, like damn, the world wants me to shut the fuck up. <laughs> Because it's not like it's just, you know, the United States. The world was like, shut the fuck up, Susie. People in France were like, who's Susie? I don't know, but shut the fuck up. <laughs> I think that was like the cherry on top for me. Um, so that's my recap. Go ahead, let me know what you guys think about the first episode of Basketball Wives Season 4. Leave a comment. All right, deuces.